Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm here on Honeymoon Island State Park in Florida, near Tampa and Clearwater, right here at the beachfront. I'm doing one of my favorite things, and that's beachcombing, and looking to see what the sea will reveal to me today. As I've been walking down the beach, among other things, I found lots of horseshoe crabs washed up on the beach. So I thought today would be a great opportunity to teach you everything you should know about horseshoe crabs. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Today has been a pretty special day in addition to finding sponges and shells and lots of different kinds of things. I also came across a, a hammerhead shark and that's not something you see on the beach every day. But I want to talk to you today about horseshoe crabs. These guys have been around for 480 million years, virtually unchanged. And it's incredible how they are still here and still existence today, but they are threatened. Horseshoe crabs get their name honestly because they have this horseshoe kind of shape to them. And they have three main body parts. There's a head, the abdomen, and the telson or the tail. Now I gotta say this formidable looking tail is sometimes implicated in, oh, you know, that'll sting you or this or that. It's uh, completely harmless. It is kind of sharp though and has a sawtooth edge to it. But it's used by the horseshoe crab to right itself if it gets turned over by the waves. And it can also be used to swim. And horseshoe crabs will have this odd swimming motion where they'll swim upside down and use that tail to help steer. But mostly the tail is used for leverage to help it move around on the bottom, avoid obstacles, and get righted again if it gets turned over. This hard exoskeleton is made up of chitin, and it's the same material in your fingernails. It's very hard, not easily digestible, and uh, very few things actually feed on these horseshoe crabs, especially when they're larger. Because of the amount of armor on them, the amount of chitin, and they also have very low muscle mass compared to, say, blue crabs and Alaskan king crabs, which are harvested and known for their delightful meat. These really don't have a lot of meat, so it's not a lot of incentive. It takes too much energy for a predator to really get much from them. You can see that they have a very distinct eye with a kind of a ridge above it. Make them look kind of mean if you look at them from the front. And they also have eight other eye spots, several on the top and several on the bottom, which are used for light detection. A very surprising thing about horseshoe crabs is they're not crabs at all. We kind of put them in the crab brute because they have, they're arthropods for sure. They have a jointed exoskeleton like all arthropods, including crustaceans and arachnids, the crabs and the spiders, but they really don't fit in the group at all. With genetic and DNA analysis found that horseshoe crabs are more closely related to the spiders than they are to uh, true crabs and crustaceans themselves. In fact, horseshoe crabs have been put in their own distinct family, their own uh, little category, because they're so distinctive, and I think they've earned it after being here for 480 million years. If you flip a crab over, you can get a look at its uh, underside, and this is where all the busy stuff is. They have 10 legs, which when they're alive, seem to be in constant motion. They have a very small pair up here that's used to bring food to their mouth. The legs have pinchers on them. The first three here have pinchers on them, actually three to four. And then the last pair doesn't have pinchers at all, but has a uh, kind of feathered out section, and th these are used for swimming. And then in the rear are its gills also be in motion circulating water so it can get oxygen. The pinchers not strong enough to pinch 
but are useful when they're underwater moving across that sand bed to stir up small animals and worms and annelids that it will eat. It'll push those things towards its mouth. And the unusual thing about horseshoe crabs, it's its mouth is right here in the center. And on this particular specimen here, with it's got thorn-like things right on top of them. And so food is brought in there and grinded and chewed and eventually swallowed. Horseshoe crabs go through an amazing breeding ritual see my horseshoe crab episodes on my YouTube channel. I went with the American Littoral Society where we tagged them as they were coming in to breed. They will breed in late spring, May and June. We were in New Jersey in this particular case. Thousands and thousands of horseshoe crabs, 10 to 20 years old, males and females, would come up on the beaches at night of a full moon and a particularly high tide to breed. The males would go find the females and physically grab them and attach to them and stay attached in the hopes that they will be able to fertilize the eggs. The females will lay 10 to 50,000 eggs and a lot of these eggs are very important for other wildlife like migrating and endangered red knots who rely on these eggs as a food source during their migrations. Sadly, horseshoe crab populations after 480 million years are endangered. <laughs> How does that happen? You survive all this time, 480 million years, and now you're in trouble. And one of the big reasons they're in trouble is because they have a very unique blood. It's a blue colored blood. Scientists discovered that antigens in this blood can identify tiny infinitesimally small amounts of bacteria in any kind of injectable uh, substance including all our vaccines. So all our vaccines are tested to be bacteria free by an extract from the blood of these horseshoe crabs. They're also chopped up and used for fishing. And so there's a lot of regulations today that are helping settle these numbers. And I hope that researchers one day could actually find something synthetic that is as good as what the horseshoe crabs have in their blood for bacterial detection. There is nothing on the planet better at detecting bacteria than this extract from horseshoe crab blood. Horseshoe crabs have to molt to grow. And to me, it's incredible thinking, I would love to see it sometime, how do they get out of this exoskeleton with a new softer exoskeleton underneath that will expand and grow with the organism. They will actually molt 15 to 16 times during their lifetime. After walking the beach and filming this part of the episode, I wanted to see if I could learn more about horseshoe crabs and see and touch some live ones close up. So where could I do this? Well, it had to be the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center on St. Pete's Pier in St. Petersburg, Florida. The goal of Tampa Bay Watch is to advance environmental stewardship by engaging and informing and inspiring visitors about the successes and ongoing efforts to restore the ecology of Tampa Bay. Here at the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center are displays that highlight the local ecosystem and the Tampa Bay Watch's past and present work to restore it. I was excited to meet Jerry who is a volunteer for the Tampa Bay Watch and incredibly knowledgeable about all the critters that were displayed here in their discovery tank. On my channel I am always sharing and learning new things just as my viewers are. I had told Jerry all about the horseshoe crabs that I saw lying on the beach on Honeymoon Island and was astounded to learn the following. And I'll let Jerry explain it to you just as he did to me. A lot of people when they're walking the beach, we find lots of these on the beach. And people think that they're a dead animal. In fact, what it is, a horseshoe has an exoskeleton, so when it outgrows this, it has to molt. When you're walking on the beach, look for this seam that's opened up all the way around. And if that seam is opened up all the way around, it just means that the animal has shed this one, and when it pulls itself out, it's like jelly. In about 48 hours, its skin will harden back into its new shell, 
and they might be 20 or 30 percent bigger. Wow, that's fascinating. So this is a molt that you're holding? This is a molt. That is incredible. This is this one came from Honeymoon Island in Dunedin. After my visit to the Discovery Center, I went back to Honeymoon Island State Park with my new knowledge and found that, in fact, the horseshoe crabs I was picking up were not dead horseshoe crabs after all, but were the cast exoskeletons after they molted, just as Jerry had explained to me. And I see that they, in fact, have a split all along this seam. Well, that split tells me that this isn't a dead horseshoe crab, and this is actually a molt. At the Discovery Center, it's cool to see how the horseshoe crabs behave in their environment under the surface of the water, it's something that I never see from my terrestrial view on the beach. I was most impressed with how quickly horseshoe crabs could bury themselves under the sand. I believe that these early stage horseshoe crabs are probably the ones that are most vulnerable to predators and try to spend a lot of their time hidden under the sand as they feel for worms and other organisms with their feet. So I want to give a shout out to Jerry and the Tampa Bay Watch Discovery Center. Be sure to come visit when you're in the Tampa St. Pete area. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door, and I hope you'll go out beachcombing and discover cool things. Check out my seashore and Florida playlists. I'm doing lots and lots of episodes on things that you'll find along the beach and on these barrier islands themselves. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature. Frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.